if McNutts and the Mudbricker are watching this, then I haven't forgotten about the tag videos, but I have over the last few days been distracted by a number of things. One of the things which has distracted me has been this terrible business of what has happened over in Norway, in Oslo, with this Anders Brevik nut job, idiot, whatever you want to call him. One of the reasons this particular issue has affected me is that Oslo is the place I was born and I still have family over there in Norway but don't keep particularly close contact with them. But even if it wasn't for that, it's uh, any time somebody goes on a killing spree uh, it's rather depressing and someone like me tries to figure out ways that that kind of behaviour could be prevented. So I, I go over all kinds of ideas in my mind about whether increased surveillance or uh, tighter controls on the accessibility to guns, whether any of that really works. I think that what a lot of it comes down to is that being very, very simplistic about it is you just get people who are bad. Um, you could call it evil, but the behaviour is incredibly selfish and callous. Why would anyone go on a killing spree? What are they trying to achieve? And did they achieve it? Did this guy, Anders Brevik, did he achieve what he was trying to do? I think because he did what he did in such a calculating, premeditated way, he probably did. Maybe he has achieved what he wanted to. He certainly got himself some publicity, but whether that will stop more Muslims from being allowed into Norway or not, I, I don't know. The automatic reaction when people hear about an atrocity of this sort is that it was probably caused by Muslims. Um, that proved to be wrong. There are idiots on all sides. I have heard it said that this Anders Brevik chap was a fundamental Christian. I, I don't know, I've not had the time to look into him in great detail. One thing which I heard on the news yesterday was that his court hearing was held in private. The reason being, and it, it seemed to be demanded, that this guy did not get publicity. As a member of the public, who absolutely detests horrible behaviour like that. I still want to... I want to know what this guy was thinking and I want to know what his reasons were for doing what he did. There's... the thought is always there that um, some of his reasoning might be uncomfortably close to something I might myself think. I don't, I don't know. I've not looked into it in, in enough depth. I haven't had the time to read his 1300 page document or find out a huge amount about him, but... But he's got people's attention now anyway, so if he's got something to say I would rather a lot of people heard it so that collectively as a society, as a species, we can have a better chance of helping people avoid a situation like this in the future. I think if you push the whole thing to one side or bury it under the carpet, there's a greater chance that similar things will happen in the future. I think it's important that we try to recognise what goes through the mind of someone like this and, hard as it may be, try to work out how to spot the patterns and recognise such things in other people, but unfortunately it's probably uncomfortably close to home. A lot of the thought patterns that this guy had, the difference being he thought that he could further his own agenda 
by killing a load of innocent people. That's where I can't understand what he has done. And usually when people go on a killing spree at the end of it, they are either killed or they turn the gun on themselves. But for some reason this guy didn't want to die. He wanted the publicity. Well, he's got the publicity. More than anything else, I... I think the focus should be on fundamentalism. Anyone who thinks it's okay to take the lives of others just because they have a different political view, or it's such a nasty way of bringing about change, whatever direction it comes from, whether it be from the far right or from Islam, or from fundamental Christians, or wherever it comes from. But I think we need to listen to what he is saying so that we can avoid similar situations from happening again. We're probably not going to, but we've got to try. Where's the distinction between a fundamentalist who holds strong views, whether religious or otherwise, and a fundamentalist who thinks it's alright to kill innocent people to further their cause? Another thing I wonder about is how many more people there are who would be capable of doing what this guy has done. How many of us would only need to be pushed a little bit to take their actions to such an extreme level? Unfortunately, I can imagine a situation where somebody could become very depressed and disillusioned with the world and reach a point where they do not care about anyone else, they do not care about themselves, they do not care about the consequences of anything they do. And some people have, as far as I can work out, got to this point and decided that they are going to basically go out on a killing spree and slaughter as many innocent people as they can. Such a thing happened in Dunblane in 1996, I think it was, um, where this Hamilton chap went into a high school and killed 15 or so children and then turned the gun on himself. And also there is Columbine and there is the horrendous massacre at Beslan some years ago. These things are probably going to keep happening, but I really think we need to take a long, hard look at why people find themselves in situations like this where they want to slaughter other people. Why? It's very hard to try to rationalize it. That's what I think about the situation, so don't take my word for it. These are just thoughts and opinions. Unfortunately, I can imagine a situation where the... Ducks quacking. <laughs>